This video was brought to you by Yamaha Proven Off-Road ATVs and Side-by-Side -side Vehicles. Hey Archery Talk, this is Lucas and today is my favorite video of the year to do. It is our 2019 Target Bow Shootout. I've spent months shooting these bows getting ready for this and uh, before we get started, if you could please like, share and subscribe, it really would help the channel an awful lot. The bows in question this year are the Prime Logic CT9, the PSE Supra Focus and the Martin Axon 40. I would normally have a Hoyt and Matthews target bows, but they did not have any this year to speak of any new target rigs. I've shot all their other ones in the past, and I also thought I was going to have a Bowtech in this year, the Bowtech Reckoning, but it did not arrive in time for us to uh, put this together. Hopefully it'll come soon. We'll look for some more videos down the road. I did ask for other manufacturers if they wanted to participate, so if you might be noticing a few major guys missing, just know that we asked, and uh, not everybody wants to, keep, wants to take part. It's entirely up to them. No hard feelings. Our first category will be specs, and the Prime Logic CT9 has an axle to axle length of 39 inches, a brace height of 7 inches, and an IBO rated speed of 325 feet per second. I've got this one set up with 60 pound limbs and a 29 and a half inch draw length. The PSE Super Focus has an axle to axle length of 37 inches, a brace height of 7 inches, and an IBO rated speed of 328 feet per second. PSE sent this one to me with 50 pound limbs, which I've maxed out to 52. And the draw length is also set at 29 and a half inches, although with the longest let off set setting them in right now, I'm at about 30 inches. The Martin Axon 40 is a 39 inch axle to axle bow, also with a seven inch brace height and also with a 328 feet per second IBO rating. I've got this bow with 60 pound limbs and I'm in the 29 and a half inch draw mod, which is drawing about an eighth of an inch long. Our next category is going to be draw cycle and more than any other year I've been doing these videos these, these all three of these bows are very similar in how they draw. None of them have any noticeable hump into a valley and they're all really smooth so it's a tough one to pick a winner on. Uh, if I have to I'm going to go with the with the Logic CT9. It is really a buttery smooth draw. It's a little bit stiffer maybe than the Synergy X1 I tested last year but that's that's hard to say without running them back to back but the bow is really nice and smooth pulling with zero dump into a valley at all before you hit the uh, hit the draw stops. And on this one, I've got the, straight, the cable stops installed on here, although you can use limb stops if you want. So you can set your wall to feel any way you like. It's uh, another neat feature of, uh, of all the Prime bows. The Super Focus is a similar feel to the Prime. It's a, it's a little bit lighter, so it's hard to say exactly how it matches up being only 52 pounds. Uh, but again, it's a very linear pull into the wall. Uh, with again no real noticeable dump. The valley, despite being in the 75% let off mod on this boat, is very short, so it's fairly aggressive. It's a, uh, it's much like a Hoyt Prevail in that regard. Uh, and the draw, the the wall rather is for for a limb for a cable stop bow rather. This this wall is very solid on the Super. So if you if you like a solid walled bow, uh, I think you'll like the Super a lot. The Martin Axon is also, again, a very smooth linear pull this year. The only reason I'm going to put it in third place in, in this particular competition is I think because of the chatter I'm getting on the cable slide when I draw back. It kind of goes tick, 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 just a little bit. You'll see that right now. And uh, really, that's the only thing, only thing giving this boat any demerit points whatsoever. It's Again, it's a smooth feeling boat, and it's got a limb stop on the bottom, so it is a very solid back wall. I prefer just a hair of give. Uh, which, which cable stops normally give me, but if you like a rock solid back wall and with a limb stop, then the Martin Axon should be right up your alley. The next category we're going to look at is grip, and I put it this high in the video because grip is one of the most important things to me. If the bow's grip doesn't feel right in my hand, I'm generally either not going to want to shoot it all that much or I'm not going to shoot it as well as I can. And fortunately, all three of these bows have, uh, have excellent target grips. I like a grip with a flat front. All three, all three of these bows provide that. So picking a winner is a little tricky for me. I'm, if I had to choose one, I'm going to go with the Super Focus. Uh, it just fits perfectly in my hand. I can't explain exactly why it's, it gets a nod over the other ones, except that it just feels right to me. Your mileage is going to vary on this. Second place for me is going to go to the, the Prime Logic CT9. Again, it's a grip that fits pretty nice. I get maybe just a hair of rubbing uh, underneath the bottom side of the shelf. Nothing serious, but it's a, you know, we're, we're splitting hairs here. And the Martin Axon 40 is going to finish third for me, and that's not to say it's not a grip I like. I actually like it quite a bit. It just might be a hair wide for my hand. I usually run like a large, extra large glove size, and uh, for whatever reason, the, the wider set grips tend to not fit super well in my hand. This one fits okay. It just takes a slight backseat to the others, and just in my opinion. Again, your mileage will vary. The next category we're going to look at is tunability. 
And if you can't tune a bow, it's, you're not going to shoot it very well. Unfortunately, I had no trouble uh, getting any of these bows set up. The easiest for me, I think, overall was the Martin Axon 40. Uh, I have I shot three or four different arrows out of this bow. I shot my kind of skinny outdoor arrows. I shot my 27 sized indoor arrows. I shot some 23s. And I even shot some 3D size arrows, gold tip X cutters. And I had absolutely no trouble at all getting bullet holes through paper with all of these. That they it was probably as easy of a time as I've ever had tuning bows for multiple arrows before. It's just a, a treat to set up. I'm going to give second place in this category to the Super Focus. Um, again, I had no real trouble uh, getting this bow to tune right. I just found the center shot was off a little bit to the left. I normally set up a bow at around 13 16 from the riser. This one I've got set up just a, a hair more than one inch. It's a little more left than I'd like it to be, but if it really bothered me, I would just get some shims and move the cams over. I don't find it to be a real big deal. Uh, and once I figured out the proper rest placement, uh, tuning this bow was really pretty much a breeze. Third place in a very close category is going to be the CT9. Um, I had some trouble off the bat with this bow, and I never have trouble tuning prime bows. Uh, but this one was giving me like a, a horizontal tear that I couldn't shake no matter what I did with the rest. I was kind of pulling my hair out. And then I, then I decided to move my stabilizer, my rear stabilizer, out a little bit. I normally keep it tucked in tight to the riser, and uh, I moved it out, and all of a sudden, all of my problems disappeared, and this bow has been shooting and tuning very well ever since then. Next up, we're going to look at speed, which has never been a real big concern of mine with a target bow. I don't shoot unknown distance 3D or anything like that, and I've got a long enough draw length uh, that I can get any bow shooting a comfortable speed for me anyway. Um, and this one's a, a bit of a tricky category because the PSC came with 50 pound limbs rather than 60, so it's going to be at a bit of a disadvantage. I've got it maxed up to 52. Uh, but that said, I guess the winner of this category is going to be the Prime, uh, both it and the Martin shot about 292 feet per second with a 350 grain gold tip platinum pierce arrow at 60 pounds. Uh, the Prime though was about five seconds faster when I switched to a heavier 406 grain arrow. So I'm not entirely sure why, because um, both bows felt like they were tuned right for that arrow, but whatever, for whatever reason, the Prime just shot that one uh, just a few feet per second faster. The Supra Focus came in a little bit slower, obviously, due to its 60 pounds, due to its 52 pound uh, maximum limbs, and I saw about 275 feet per second out of that same 350 grain arrow as the other bows. Our next category is fit and finish, and uh, when it comes to the high level target bows, you should be expecting excellent fit and finish, and these bows, for the most part, provide just that. If I'm picking a winner, I'm going to go with the Logic CT9. I don't think I've had a bow that has ever been this well kind of put together as far as fit and finish goes uh, with the exception of maybe the Hoyt Prevail. It's right on par. Those are the two kind of cleanest looking bows I've ever had. Uh, I've gotten many compliments on the Logic's kind of tundra color, which I, I chose because I like it and a lot of other people seem to like it too. There are no flaws in this bow whatsoever. It is, it is a looker. Uh, second, I'm going to give to the Super Focus. Again, it's a, it's, it's a bow by PSC, so it's got it should be put together well, and it really is. It's a it's it's a flawless looking bow. I see no nothing you know that, that you would find a concern for outside of maybe the center shot issue. Um, that's really the only thing holding it back in the least. But it's a it's a nice looking bow at a at a very nice price point, which we'll get to in a little bit. Third place in this category is going to go to the Axon Forty, um, and it's not the main issue I had with this bow is uh is was with the was with the shelf extension on this bow. It's a bolted on piece rather than being machined into the riser. And it, the where it bolts on, it was really digging into my hand and driving me kind of nuts to the point where I didn't want to shoot the bow. Eventually I popped off that shelf, it just unscrews and I made my own out of Sugru, which is a kind of like a, it's like a Play-Doh material that you can shape and it'll eventually form into a rubber after about 24 hours of curing. So it's a, that has cured any major ills I have with that site. How about that bow, rather? Uh, the other, I guess the other fit and finish issue might be with that cable slide, which is kind of giving me that chatter that we talked about before. Uh, but beyond that, the bow is a, you know, the bow looks nice and I have no, no real complaints with it as far as function goes. Just a couple of small fit and finish issues. Our next category is accuracy, and this is probably the one that's most important in target archers, because if you're not accurate, then you're not going to be doing very well in target archery. Uh, fortunately, any modern target bow from a big manufacturer is going to be good and accurate and all of these fit the bill. Uh, for me, the one I guess I'm most accurate with overall is going to be the Logic CT9. It, I had a little bit of trouble getting comfortable with this bow at the beginning. Uh, it, as it comes from the factory, it has, it has 80 percent let off, which is a little more than I would like in a target bow. I should have ordered a one draw length larger cam and then 
brought in the draw stops a little bit to get it to get the lead off in the valley where I would like. That's on me. Ultimately, I managed to, to fix my accuracy issues just by pulling harder into the, into the wall, uh, which I should have been doing from the beginning, and that has really helped get me back on track. And right now, I've been getting along very well with this bow the last month or so. Uh, I shot it in a bunch of tournaments, and, and I'm just starting to feel more and more comfortable with it, and it's putting up the scores I want to see. Second place here is going to go to the Super Focus. Uh, this is a very traditional feeling target bow. It has a, a very short valley, and you have to stay aggressive on it, and, uh, and ultimately it's shooting quite well for me. I think the only thing that's putting it below the prime is the limbs are just 52 pounds, and I, I just need a little bit more draw weight, I think, to, to be at my best and most stable with this bow. Uh, maybe 55 or 56 pounds, what I, th what I think would be ideal with this. If I was in maybe the 70 or 75 percent let off mod, uh, not let off, mod, let off position on this bow. Uh, but beyond that, the bow shoots great, tunes great, and I have no complaints. We're really splitting airs when we're talking about accuracy differences between these bows. Uh, third place is going to go to the Axon 40, and I, I hate putting in third place because it's just as accurate as the other bows, realistically. I think I've probably shot my best overall rounds with that bow, but I've also, for whatever reason, had major struggles with that bow, and I've probably shot my worst overall rounds with it. So I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm a little more overall consistent with these two, uh, but my highs with the Axon have been great. It's a, it's a superb bow. It's a, it also comes with a, with a, with a high, high let off from the factory. And so after talking to some Martin pros like Shane Wills and Jeff Hopkins, I just kind of brought that, um, the bottom limb stop in just a little bit. And I rotated, add a little rotation to the top cam uh, to tighten it up a little bit. And it's given me a little bit more holding weight, which is what I'm looking for. And it's, and it's shooting a lot better since. So really they're, they're all shooting way better than I could shoot, bottom line. Next up, we're gonna talk about price and value. And, uh, this year, more so than others, the prices of these bows were all pretty much neck and neck. The, the Supra Focus and the Martin Axon were both about $1,100 retail, and the uh, Prime is $200 more. Um, but the Prime gets a lot of bonus points by offering you free replacement strings and cables every two years you own the bow. So if you're going to own the bow for, if you're planning to own a bow for four or five years or more, you're going to make up that price difference with the free strings and cables for sure. Um, and it also comes with both limb stops and cable stops, which is just add, just little added bonuses, which I think help push it over the top as far as value goes. But realistically, all of these bows, uh, I, would, I would put kind of neck and neck for that price and value category. The final category is where I pick a winner, and this is the toughest one for me to do every year. Um, none of these guys are making bad bows anymore. So all again, as I mentioned, all these bows can shoot better than I can, uh, so it makes it difficult to pick a winner. But the one, how I, generally choose to do it is the one I'm most comfortable with. And I think I'm going to go with the Prime Logic CT9 this year. Uh, I really think if I ordered this with a 30 inch cam and brought the draw length down to 29 and three quarters, it would feel absolutely perfect. As is, it still feels really good. I just have to pull a little harder against the wall for me to shoot my best. But it's uh, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm on the bow is, uh, is everything I want it to be. And, uh, and so it's, it's, it's the winner for me, but just a hair really over the other two, the Super Focus Again, this is a fantastic shooting bow and great value at 1100 bucks. And the, the Axon 40, again, when I'm on, has shot, has given me my best scores. I just not, for whatever reason, I'm not on as much with that bow as I am with some others. So that's about it, Archery Talk. Thank you so much for watching. We're going to have some hunting bow reviews and a full seven bow hunting shootout in the coming weeks. Thanks again for watching, and we'll see you again soon.